it's five o'clock. We're in New York City. I'm in New York City. It's five o'clock and it is time for Watch Me Work, where we work together and then we talk with you about your work and your creative process. Um, for those of you who don't know, most of you, I've been doing this show for about 15 years. We started it in a little theater down the street from the public theater, and then we moved into the public theater. And then when lockdown came, we went on Zoom, and we've been here on Zoom ever since. Except for last week when I was at the Glade uh, at Little Island, and we had so much fun. Yeah, we were live. Hey, Carol. Carol Wave. And we were live at Little Island. Um, and I appreciate those of you who could uh, swing by and hang out and do live watch me work with us. So um, we are going to, and just the little things, like uh, while we don't have time, the bandwidth to share work, actually read aloud from your work or show us your fabulous choreography or show us your woodworking or architecture project, what have you. We do have plenty of time to talk about process. We have time to talk shop with you, which we very much welcome. And it's also a, an encouraging space. So if you have the desire to like talk shit about somebody, uh, do it somewhere else. And if you start to, then I will sort of gently go on to the next question. If you do have questions after our 20 minute work session together, new work department will show you, tell you how to get in touch. Yeah, Hello. hi everybody. And welcome to Watch Me Work. After our 20 minutes work session is over, please go ahead and use the raise my hand function at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And we'll get a nice queue of questions going. And then I will call on your name and ask you to unmute to ask your question. And that's what we're gonna do. Fabulous. Okay, here we go. I got my timer and boom.
All right, that's 20 minutes. And now we are gonna have the conversation. Um, those of you who have questions for me or for the group about your work and your creative process, if you have a question, here we are. Please go ahead and use the raise the hand function and we'll get started with the questions. Thank you, Zoe. How's your writing going today, Zoe? Zoe's a writer too. Huh? No. Uh oh. Uh oh. I said it in public. Are you covering your mouth? Is that what you're doing? How's it going? Good. Uh. Sure. Yeah. There you go. Just thumbs up. Just, just thumbs up, thumbs. Up. You don't have to give it. Uh, no, I don't. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, huh? I just, <laughs> I just was acknowledging you as, as uh, one of the guardians of the galaxy. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Great, Lisa. Please go ahead and unmute. Hey, Lisa. How are you? I'm I'm good. Hi. How are you? Um. Okay. So last time I asked a question, it was about balancing revisions with creating new work. Yes. You told me to come back and report. Hi, I'm you reporting. Did. You did. Yes. So I'm reporting. It worked, but it did. I devoted some time to rewrites. And then a little less time to rewriting. And then I wrote two new pieces. And then I said, okay, now I'll get serious and rewrite. So so there you go. I, I just wanted to let you know how that went down. Yay. I'm so pleased for you. I'm so pleased. Is this a, a practice or a strategy that could maybe work next time around, you think? What do you think? Uh, well, I'm using it now, um, which is good. I mean, right now I had to put the new stuff away because I'm once again on deadline for a workshop. Mm -hmm. So I better get serious about this because the deadline's actually today. But um, yeah. You live in California, so you got a yeah. couple of hours. Yes, I do. I do have a couple hours. Um, but I think it was a good strategy. It was a, it was a really good way. And that way I didn't feel like I was... Um, bypassing something to do something else mm -hmm. if that makes any sense like you were like kind of putting off the thing that you would rather not do in favor of the thing that you write so i wanted to do and you know like probably everybody else knows once you get into it it generates its own energy and then you're not thinking so much about rewriting or re-editing you're just thinking about a different kind of creation so, but I think having that little bit of a structure um, helps a lot. So thank you for that. You're welcome. I think you succeeded in having your cake and eating it too. I think that's what they were talking about, whoever they were. <laughs> so, yeah, or, 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 or maybe you were like light is, a particle and a wave. You know, we, there, there's a possibility for, for both if we, like you said, create a structure or have a little bit of a, a sort of belief that we can actually uh, accommodate both practices. Well done. Good job. Thanks. I'm very happy for you. I'm very happy for you. And good luck meeting your deadline today. What time? Today, like in an hour? What, when do you have to? They were not specific mm -hmm. about when, and they're actually in Chicago. So, um, okay. uh oh. Yeah, I know. Uh -oh. I was working on it during my 20 minutes. I'm working. I'm working. Don't worry. Okay. There you go. Well done. Well done. Who's next? Kimmy, please go ahead hey, and ask your question. Hey, Hi. 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 I'm so glad you're here. Um, I wanted to share that I that I put on my big girl pants mm -hmm. and I reached out and <laughs> I sent my play to a friend, Kathleen Wilhoyt, who's a really fabulous actress. Uh, she's an actor. She's also a teacher. She's oh. 
brilliant. She's a musician. She's incredible. Um, and she loved my play. And then I got the balls to ask her to, to read it with me. And I put together a bunch of uh, people and they were all so nice and I didn't pay them anything but lasagna. I paid everybody in lasagna. So, <laughs> so <laughs> and I got really nervous cause it was getting expensive. You know, I, I rented a little theater and I, uh, yeah, I, 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 some friends were really nice to me and I got a theater for like $35 an hour and we had a, a real sit down and then Lynn Stewart, I don't know if you know her, she's from, um, Pee Wee's Playhouse. Mm -hmm. She was Miss Yvonne and she's, uh, Charlie's mom in, um, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. And she's this great groundlings actor. And she came to watch and to listen. And I, and I said, well, I have some ancillary characters and an extra script. I, I mean, if you if you felt like it. And she really showed me that there are no small parts. She leveled the whole cast every time she opened her mouth. And so I, I listened to this whole thing with these great actors. And I learned so much. And I, I got a little nervous. But, but I listened. Because of you, I got nervous and not because of you I got nervous but because of you I got out of the nervousness I'm listening and I'm going oh the jokes aren't landing they're not they're not it sounds sadder than it should be and then I went well it's a cold read there's no director there's no this like just relax calm down and just listen to everybody right so I did and it was amazing and at the end everybody liked the play and I was really touched because these are people that wouldn't lie to me, you know, and they, they, and it's hard material. It's about a woman who wants to commit suicide and, and it's dark and it's funny, but it's, it's hard. And, uh, and they just were so generous with my words. And it was the first time that I felt like an artist a real artist and I was taken into their fold and all of these incredible people with a hundred years of resumes, you know, they've all this work that they've done all these years and they were so amazing and they came through and they made my play just sing. And then we talked about like the tweaks that they were offering were like so minor and I'm just my head hurts because it's i i have never received such love all at once and that was almost hard to take just sitting there being loved it was a lot but it was it just you make everything so palpable and so reachable and I'm a better person because of you and because of watch me work. And I just wanted to say thank you and to share this opportunity that I, I did something really good and my, my work was respected and, and I'm better because of you. So, and this group and everybody watch me work in the public. And so th thank, thank you for, for being here for all of us. I don't know what I'd do without you. You're doing great. Kimmy, your success is so deserved. <laughs> Thank you. Come on, come on. You've been coming to this for a long time. And you know, you and Kimmy, this is better than grad school. Just saying. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank I mean, you for saying that. Yeah, well, it Kimmy, because it is. What you experienced with your community, with people who are professionals in the field, renting your own space. And I mean, you wrote the play, you rented the space, you gathered the actors together, you fed them with lasagna. I mean, that's better than grad school. Thank you so I much mean, for saying That's what grad school is. It's like training people to do, but you've got it already, which is why you're, which is why you're exactly where you're at. Congratulations. We're so happy for you thank you thank I'm you everybody really thank you, Lori. Thrilling. it's so thrilling it, your success is so thrilling thank you so awesome. much 
Look at right. you. Look at you. I know. Who would have thought, right? <laughs> uh, well, we would have thought. We would have thought. thought. We have been thinking. Come on. Come on. Yeah, we're so happy for you. I'm so Look grateful you. for that. Thank you. I'm so, I'm so. Look at you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. More. So you're all invited to the premiere. Yeah. <laughs> you're also, are you in LA also? I am right now, actually. I'm in Toluca Lake, house sitting cats. Oh, I think that's, nice. it's so redundant. Cats don't need to be, they don't care. They don't care. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need me. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think, I think they do care. They just don't show it. They're not demonstrative. <laughs> They're cats. <laughs> Other ways, they'll shit on people's furniture. Um, so they like, care in that way but um so so happy for you well done thank you very well done. much and so you know not that you need to have a next step but what is your you know what what's your game plan going forward just so um i'm working on the rewrites right now okay and um adding just a little bit you know more um i i felt like maybe there was not an i i am i am really drawn to dialogue you know, and the the thing that I that I'm attracted to, like waiting for Godot or summer 1976, or you know, when it's quiet and there's people talking to each other and things unfold, or who's afraid of Virginia, like whatever's in in one spot. And I forget that you can do anything in theater. You know, you can you can you know, like I saw Cheetah Rivera and she was in her eighties or something and threw her leg up on Antonio Banderas and broke the fourth wall. And then they filled it with water and they, and then the water, then the stage was dry. And I was just like, you know, like, <laughs> and, and I tend to be more quiet in the theatrical thing. So I think I can do more showing than telling. And I'm just tweaking that little bit. Sounds good. Yay thank you and yeah and then and then I guess I'll do another reading and I have I have um uh registered it with the Library of Congress even though I'm going to be changing it and I have uh put it on the new play exchange and I have submitted it to a few places great well done thank you fantastic, fantastic. thank you fantastic. Susan Marie thank you know keep us posted Kimmy okay I will I will thank you so much you're welcome so much. Love you guys. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Yay. All right. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. <laughs> Rebecca, please go ahead and ask your question. Hey, Rebecca. Hi. Hey, it was great good. seeing you a couple <laughs> days ago in the Glade. Yes. What? You must be exhausted. Oh, <laughs> I no. Must have been... no. No? Oh, no. A whole week. No, wait, of... not, not, no, no, I'm just. I know it was it was a crazy it was a crazy week uh, curating and hosting and all that in the Glade at Little Island, but um, it was fun. A great team, a wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful support. Yeah, yeah. How you doing? I, I'm I'm good. Uh, I'm good. I um, things are moving along with the manuscript. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And I went to a a reading by um one of my professors from my MFA, that very expensive writing group I did. Um, and uh, and she had, one of her books had just been reissued, um, Rachel Cohen. And she said to me, so I went up to say hi and you know all that. And she said, you know that piece you wrote about Hurricane Katrina, you really should like republish it. And I was like, she said, I was reading it the other day and I was like, Really? Um, it was in Callaloo. And it was yeah. oh, great. probably a year, 18 months after Katrina. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, we're coming up on the 20th anniversary in a year. So oh, I forgot that. And I, you know, I've had this Substack account I started and have never used. Um, I thought, well, I'll serialize it. But I don't know how to serialize. I mean, I've just, it's like, how do you serialize a nonfiction piece um, or anything? Mm -hmm. So, you know, back in the day, that's how that's how we got our work out like, during the Harlem Renaissance. 
like right like the Harlem Renaissance, like, like Dickens I'm so sorry like Dickens oh, like well him first yeah way back day sorry yeah, went yeah. To the way back yeah yeah right um, so, so how, is it a question I mean you want to talk about how one might yeah share? so yeah. I I mean I don't again I, I I don't I don't know the piece I didn't catch it the first time around I catch it the second time around though but um uh are there any um paragraphs that that end in cliffhangers or you can create them well my writing style is all so i started out as a poet okay. so i always like to have a turn great and so there are those um you know the recommendation on substack is 1500 words at a time which okay and i think this is like 28,000. Okay. It's a long piece. So um it's okay just go through it and I I don't want to get into the math right now but go go through yeah. it and pick the appropriate length if it's 1500 words or maybe a little, you want to do a little less, you know, I would say a little less. Leave them yeah. one I'd say a thousand at a time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and just go there and kind of do it do it sort of clinically almost. Go to it and as you are first and foremost a poet, you can even create a turn or a cliffhanger where there might not be one now, mm -hmm. right? Even if it's repeating something that you're going to repeat in the next installment, mm -hmm. or even if it's you make a question out of something that's very I'm doing that's very solid and sure. Mm -hmm. Create a turn, create yeah. a cliffhanger like that. I would say a thousand words at a time if the recommendation is fifteen hundred. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, just because you know, if you're if it's a new account, you wanna you wanna get folks, you know, kind of coming in, um, yeah. and create those turns. That sounds like fun, and that's a whole new way of, of doing it. It's like if you have a a, a novel and you want to change it into a film, you're gonna change the the form a little bit to fit the mm -hmm. way that it, it's being uh, presented. Um, that's really exciting. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to to do it. I've I've sort of set it aside um and it's you know the comes in after the read and write which is you know hopefully a couple three days i'll be able to uh -huh. think about it um there's also so it it's it has blues songs in it from the 1927 flood um so so the great flood, um, which, right, right. yeah, a couple people know what that was. No, I'm just, I'm just saying it over to myself. Uh, is that, are those public domain? Um, probably not. Don't I mean, the, the very I first one was Lonesome Refugees by Laurie Smith. Yeah. And it was about yeah. the flood. I think it's, I think it's, you can say in the tech, listen to Lonesome Refugees by Laurie Smith. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I was thinking just said, putting in links to music or even. Yeah, yeah. Direct people to the music. I would not. I mean, that's just my, you know, if it's not public domain, don't reprint things. You know, OK. Yeah, yeah. Give And then it's always better also if it's a song that's recorded that you can access, you know, mm -hmm. Spotify or Apple Music or whatever. Refer people, just direct people to it. Even if you don't, if and I don't know how Substack works. If you can't actually embed a link, I don't know. But you can't yeah. say listen to la 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 like that. G yeah, give a listen to bah, like that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's fun. That's really fun. And if there's any artwork, any images you want people to look at, you can say take a look at. You know what I mean? So you don't have to reprint someone else's work that's not public domain. Yeah, I mean, I think until we get to. Sister is at a Tharp. Everything is public domain that I've got, but I'll I have oh, really? to look at that. Okay. It's really early, and it's okay. pretty obscure stuff. So uh, okay, okay, okay. But I want people to hear the music as well. Yeah. So that's um. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sounds uh, great. Yeah. So a thousand, a thousand words. I think so. I just, cause you, if you're, if you're just starting, I mean, you, you have your Substack account, but I would say less is more to get people mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That was, that's my suggestion, but I don't know. Anybody else have any, any, you know, I said the recommendation is 1500 go less. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. And if that if a thousand feels too long, do you know seven seven hundred? You know, do do even less than that. Make it something that people can look at, get interested in, and leave again. Those cliffhangers are really important. Those or those turns, as you call them, which is lovely. The mm -hmm. turn around. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Like Thank that. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Great, Great question. Jane, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Hey, Jane. Beautiful background. Oh, thank you. It's a. I'm in uh, Richmond, Cal California, and it's a park up on up in the hills. Oh wow! Um, oh, beautiful. Anyway, yeah, I caught the light at a really good time. Oh, how good. So, uh, yeah, this is my first time here. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, I, I I was interrupted at just at the time when Lisa um, uh, repeated the advice you gave her because um, I have this very same problem of, of needing to set, you know, strategize for revision and moving on. Um, and I missed, I missed what Lisa repeated. You apparently had told her the week before. Yeah. So I'd love that information because that's a problem I'm having right now. Okay. Um, uh, Lisa, do you want to repeat it? And then I'll fill in if anything, if we need to add anything, Lisa, let's hear it. Thank you. Um, hi, Jane. Welcome. Um, and what uh, what I learned and what worked for me, um, suggested by SLP, was to set a amount of time. So to say, okay, so today, hello, I'm going to work on a revision for 20 minutes. Or, you know, I, I actually did use 20 minutes because I know... Um, that seemed to be it. And then after you've given yourself that 20 minutes of revision time, then you can switch to something else. My little cheat was sometimes I started with a new thing and then I said, okay, I'm going to give myself the new thing until now. And then I'm going to switch back to the revision. And then after a while, after you fall into it, you can trust yourself a little bit more that you're not going to spend you know, three hours creating something new and five minutes doing a revision. Because um, it does take a little bit of time, I found, and probably everybody else maybe thinks so too, to switch your brain back and forth. To get into one set of characters and then get into something else. So that was the advice. That's well Very done. Helpful. Well done, Lisa. We would add to that, um, Jane, uh, a timer. Yes. You know, oh, I do. I use I one. This is better than this. Whoops. Sorry. This. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is yeah. track. Yeah. The timer. Yeah. Uh, great. So you have a timer that's kind of only pretty much tell you know keeps up twenty minutes. It worked for Lisa. I think it's a manageable amount of time. You mm -hmm. can you know if you wanted to, so you, and I would say as Lisa suggested, we start with the thing that is slightly more difficult. But yes. at least started with the thing that she really wanted to do, which is fine too, because she was disciplined enough to put it aside and go, okay, I had yeah. my dessert. Now I'm gonna have my, you know, my whatever potatoes or whatever. Yeah. Does that does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Absolutely. I I had been given when I was really at a, um, just a, a, I don't know for lack of a better word, a, a block, a, a hesitation to continue. Mm -hmm. Someone um, who I, I do another writing group with a solo performer, Charlie Barron, who was he big, uh, does a lot of very wonderful, has done a lot of wonderful stuff in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And he does something every Wednesday morning he calls the Imaginarium and um, invites people to work on their own stuff. But he offers some prompts if people just sort of want to kind of let let their imagination go. So um when I spoke with him and one-on-one, uh, -on -one, you know, his suggestion was just, yeah, just set it to, if you're stuck, just set a timer for 15 minutes. That's all you've got to do. You know, a very non-oppressive time for you. And um, you may stop at 15 because you're not going anywhere, but more than likely, and sometimes more frequently, that will get you moving. And uh, so I've appreciated that. So I feel like I need advice. I'm not, I really, I come from more performance directing and teaching. So I've not really written creatively and um, just kind of took a big jump 
by by doing doing his workshop, got very excited by one particular prompt, and I've been working on this solo piece. And um, yeah, it's been great fun. And uh, that's why I'm here. And an actor friend told me you were doing this. Uh, and as soon as she did sent me the link, I thought, okay, <laughs> I'm I'm going. <laughs> so thanks very much. And thank oh, you sure. for it's, being it's here. Great. It's great. And th thanks, Jane. And for everybody. So it's the idea is to, I was telling uh, people, to lower the bar. Sometimes we only figure that we're going to get anywhere if we raise the bar. And I like to lower the bar. So if 15, you know, 20 minutes works for Lisa and 15 minutes works for Jane. And that seems like too much for you. Try five minutes, try three minutes, try one minute. Just try a minute just to sit in your area or be in your area and make contact with your work and build from there. And if after 15 minutes or whatever your amount of time you run screaming from the room or whatever, that's fine. You're, you're right in step with thousands of artists, hundreds of thousands of artists throughout the ages who run screaming from their work <laughs> only to come back and, and return. And, you know, because, because we remember why we love it. That's the other thing. Remind yourself why you love it, you know? And, um, yeah, Jane, I give the same prompt every day, which is just right. <laughs> just do your thing. Um, you know, prompts are cool and I love them. And I just like the same one every day. Who's next? Thank you, Robin. Please go ahead and unmute to ask a question. Hey, Robin. Hello. Hi. This is my first uh, first uh, time here. Oh and uh, I love it. I, I I wanted to ask one question and then I have another one, but I'm going to go ahead and ask the question I first intended and then okay. I'll go back if, if, maybe another time. Um, I have this very weird thing. I'm, I'm writing a, a memoir, uh, you know, personal fictional, fictionalized memoir, however you want to uh, say it, because I'm uh, it's not verbatim. It is, you know, uh, I put a lot of different things into it and I have this weird thing that I'm trying out and I just, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and do it and see how it works. But I start off um, as a child, six years old. Uh, it was written in third person, uh, six years old. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry. What is that? Stop that. I, I'm, I'm six years old. And then, um, you know, growing up and, and going to New York and then anyway, I change names. <laughs> I'm one person, I'm one name until I get to New York or until the character gets to New York. And she decides to take on another persona, another name uh, as her stage name. And she decides to use that. And she uses that the whole time that she's in New York and trying to get into shows. And um, eventually at the end of the book, she ch she changes back to her other name because she moves to the Virgin Islands and has a completely different experience. So I don't know if that's like too weird. <laughs> where do you live, Robin? Robin, where do you live? I, well, right now I live in Baltimore. Okay. Maybe it's too weird for Baltimore, but it's, <laughs> like, it's like the day, how the day rolls in New York City. Come on, girl. <laughs> okay. That's not too weird. You can call yourself one name when you're, you know, one age, and then you can be somebody else. And I think you're what you're you're doing is you're embracing the truth of life that we're not just this one person doing this one. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think your your memoir is really embracing the truth of life. We are, I mean, like like uh, what's his name? Walt Whitman said, "I contain multitudes." You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Walt Whitman is true for you. And if it's true for you, it's true for me. And it's true for all of us, you know, okay. you, you are totally allowed to have your character um, call herself something different, many different things. Maybe there's more than just two names, you know, maybe yeah. feel that freedom, feel that freedom. I, I appreciate it. Sure. And, and do I have time to just ask one more, uh, just sure. piggyback on what somebody else said? Uh, a, a lot of my, a lot of my uh, memoir has, uh, it has snippets from songs mm -hmm. growing up. And, and, and so 
I I want to keep that. I I mean I it's, I'm not putting out the whole song. Sometimes I'm putting out a couple of lines. Um, so I'm thinking that at some point maybe I would have to maybe at the end of the book have a list of 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 uh you know, uh, uh, resource sources where the songs came from and, and naming them. Um, and maybe that's, that's the way yeah, to do that's it. That's a legal thing. You, I mean, I've, I've, you know, had publishers say, well, you know, you got to get permission of the estate, even if you use one sentence. Mm, so legal okay. thing, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, but I would, I would just say, um, that, that your story sounds so beautiful, what's coming out of you sounds so beautiful. You can totally include the music, the lyrics that you've heard, you know, that you want to, but be ready to pivot perhaps if that's what's yes, going okay. okay, and and we should be so lucky. It's getting published, hooray! And then they decide, to say, <laughs> well, you can't include the songs. So let's hope that yeah. the whole story isn't, you know, dependent on the inclusion of those songs. Okay, okay. thank okay. you, thank uh, you. Great. Thank you so much, Addison. Please yeah, Addison, hey. And, and ask your questions. Hi. This is also my first time here. I love the energy. Thank you, guys. <laughs> um, I'm working on a draft of a play that I really enjoy writing, and it's, like, giving me a lot of joy. Um, but I'm trying something new in my process that I was wondering if you had thoughts on, because for the last play I wrote, I did a reading for it, and I just couldn't stand hearing it out loud it was just horrible and it, like it was painful every single rehearsal up until the performance and actually went really well so I didn't need to hate on it but um to kind of combat that this time I was thinking about um when I finish a scene that I like if I get my roommates are actors so I was like hey can you read this out loud this scene just so I can like get used to hearing my things out loud um mm -hmm. And I recently did that with a scene that I wrote and like I finished writing it. I was like, oh, this is so good. So I showed it to my friends and uh, they read it. And as I heard it, I was like, oh, it's terrible. So not in like a self-hatred way, but I was just like, OK, I, I need to work on it. But then now it's kind of getting in that paralyzing, like mm -hmm. uh, I need to mm -hmm. like self-critical ish. So I guess if you had any tips on like I want to hear my work out loud as I'm writing it, but mm -hmm. is it sometimes too soon? I or any ideas that anyone has about that? I can talk to you about that. I've been writing plays for like a hundred million years. Um, which and it's a great question. Can you? Uh, are you? Uh, can you read, Addison? Yes. Can you read aloud? I can. Great. So I would, and and I'm guessing. I mean, maybe, maybe you, and you do already read your work out loud to yourself. Yeah. Great. Great. How often do you read it out loud before you hand it off to others? I think I always read it out loud, but maybe it's not as with intentional, like listening to myself read it out loud. Okay, so how do you read it out loud? In a monotone like this? No. <laughs> no come on, tell me. I think that I, what I, li what I like about, I, I'll read it out loud, like how I read, like as an actor, I guess. But I guess what I like when other people read it is that it's still in my voice, but it's not my physical voice because it makes sense to me because I wrote it and I like it, if that makes sense. So, yeah, kind of. What I want you to do is I want you like a composer, you know, as a composer, you you can hear it already. Actors, mm -hmm. when they're doing a great job, they're amplifiers. They're great amplifiers. It's like a great amp. It's like a stack of Marshalls. I don't know if you play the guitar or whatever. It's like a stack of Marshalls. And you can really hear your work more better. But what I want you to do is I want you to get, just read your work out loud more than one time through with all the intention that you would expect from a real actor, right? Try to, as much as you can, simulate the experience of hearing it as if someone else were reading it to prepare yourself for the moment when it does jump over into another body, okay? Because... I want you to develop the confidence in your own work without looking to others to give you that confidence because mm -hmm. that confidence needs to as much as possible come from you. And it, you'll, it'll take you longer to grow it inside you if you're looking for someone else to give it to you. Does that, does that make sense? So do you, do you stand up when you read? Do you march around the room? Do you act it out? Do you? No, definitely not. I definitely be like at my computer talking. <laughs> give yourself a hot look you finish a scene right print it out for yourself on on paper 
you know, right? Hold the pages in your hand, tactile things. Get into your body, right? Get out of your head and your computer. Get into your body. Well, you got the scene. You're moving around the room. You're giving it voice. You're acting it out. You're maybe even overacting it. And as you do that, you're also going to be developing your ear to hear it. Mm. I mean, people ask me, oh, my God, how do you know if, if something's good? Or how do you know if a joke lands or whatever? I go, because I already heard it. Mm. You know, like a composer already, they already hear what they, what they write. That doesn't mean there are no surprises. That doesn't mean that actors don't offer tremendous amounts of wonderful stuff. It just means that you, you, you prepped yourself. Does that make sense? So that when you do hand it off to actors again, you're you're uh, not at the mercy of also their performance, which might be good, mm -hmm. it might be great, and sometimes great actors have the ability to make plays that aren't so good really interesting. You don't want to get into that trap either. You see what I mean? So you can have fun with your work. You know, anybody else have any very quickly uh, any anything to throw into that pot um, from your experience sure really quickly but well, we got like two minutes i'm a i'm a new writer and um and just coming out of my shell and i struggle with that a lot and i'm in a writer's group here at the public and um i was given such great advice they told me my my peers told me so generously to find my inner child and play find my sense of play um record myself like to slp's point and um yeah i think when you, when we find the joy in our writing other people feel it too and you just want to find that joy and love for your words um really and great. feel it yeah that's really great um i would just to add to that uh, just to be clear i am not suggesting that you record yourself I'm not suggesting that. I am suggesting that you are live in space in real time with script in hand. You know, you're printing out pages of your script, but you're not recording yourself. Recording yourself, in my experience, and I've done music and all kinds of stuff, recording yourself is really, really hard to, to be accepting of. Mm -hmm. So I would not add that hurdle to your work personally. I would, you know, it's even hard for me to watch a recording of a play that I'm not even in. I would suggest that you just script in hand, enjoy your words in your body, love your characters, remind yourself of why you love your characters. Okay, so that when you hand it off to an actor, you do so with with a little bit more, just a lot more confidence. Okay, and a lot more joy. All right. That's We're very so helpful. Fun. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Please come back and keep us posted of how right. it's going, because of course we. We're all about your success. And it's six o'clock. Are we back next week? Yes, we are. We're back next week. All right. All right. We love you. We, we'll see you, those of you who could show up next week at 5 p.m. Watch me work. Have a great, great week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Recording stopped.